chick, one, two, three, chick. What? We're live. Let's go. What's the, what's the topic, bro? What is it, bro? I have no idea. Yes, you do. Chicken things. <laughs> is it Growing chicken up things? in the water with fishing in their blood, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift have spent the last 10 years competing against the biggest names in professional bass fishing. Their success is landing them ranked among the top anglers in the world. If you're looking to become a better angler, then this show has all the answers. Join us and follow along to get actionable tips, tactics, and tried and true techniques directly from the pros. Welcome to Let's Talk Fish. That's funny. That's horrible. We're back. We're live. Hey, we surprised y'all too, because I, I I said last week, I'm pretty sure I said last week <laughs> that we were not going to be back in the studio for at least for, three months. For, I didn't say three <laughs> months, but I did say like a month, because you're leaving again here soon. I'm right? leaving again, coming up pretty soon to go to Mich- or Wisconsin. We, Sturgeon Bay, wherever that is, that's where I'm going. The bad part is... We don't even know where we're going because it's changing so fast. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, in all honesty, before I probably should pull up the feed, shouldn't I, y'all? <laughs> um, probably. We got a <laughs> – let's see. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm on now. Yeah, Matt did get his ears lowered. He looks like a what, what I need to get mine cut. What am cut? I doing? I'm, I'm going supposed tomorrow. to get mine cut Friday. I got one tomorrow at like 1 o'clock. I'm getting mine cut Friday. All right, um, so what we're going to talk about tonight is – why is my feed not working, Jeff? I don't know. Mine's just fine. Be, okay, it, there it goes. Um, it's not my fault. We're going to do a Chickamauga. Everything's your fault. Chickamauga recap. Chickamauga recap with Mr. <laughs> Thrift. And uh, then we probably won't see y'all for a month for real because I'm leaving tomorrow to have a little downtime with the family down uh, at the beach. And then next week, well, we're still waiting to hear. And I won't keep y'all in the dark. I know before we – oh, I just clobbered the mic. But I won't keep y'all in the dark before we get – really into the show i'll just read y'all the text that we got from bass today um concerning our new york events because everybody's been asking me like every day are y'all going to new york because we're supposed to leave uh I, I i'm supposed to leave next thursday a week from thursday the ninth and we'll be won't be returning home until about august 1st august 2nd we have back to back to back events cayuga st lawrence river and lake champlain so basically what bass is working on now they've been in touch with new york new york is um, they're very optimistic about having the events. This is in the text today that we got. Um, it's looking promising, but like so many others, uh, they're in the middle of the process. So um, within seconds of them getting word from New York, we will find out, and we will let y'all know. I'll post it on my social media, yay or nay, uh, whether we're going or not. But um, they're y'all working. Y'all ain't going to New York. Huh? Y'all ain't going to New York. You don't think we're going? So, no. so here's the deal. So this is what I've heard. I don't think so. <laughs> so Brian didn't think we're going. I know what? they had a Toyota series slated for Thousand Islands, I think, next week. Correct. And it got, and it moved. got moved to Sandusky. Correct. And let me explain what the difference might be here. Now, the um, a friend of my dad's, uh, anyway, has a lawyer friend that's in New York, and, and they were working with some other officials, and they got the PGA Tour guys' exemptions. They also got the yeah. New York Yankee players' exemptions. They also got the New York Met uh, players' exemptions. They're called pro athlete exemptions. Now, the problem with that is if you get the athletes, the fishermen, the whatever, the professionals, the full-time pros, if you get them an exemption, it's one individual exemption from what I understand. Right. So you have to fight to get exemptions for the – Cameraman. Exactly. Officials. The support crew. So – that is probably, if I had to guess, I don't know this for a fact, so nobody quote me on this, but if I had to guess, that's what the holdup is, is trying to get exemptions for more than just the anglers themselves. Um, so uh, as soon as I find something out, I will let you all know. But I do not have an answer yet, unfortunately. Um, there you go. I'll, uh, I'm going to um, I'm gonna turn it over to Thrift and let him kind of give you all a chick lowdown. Oh, you probably see the LTF shirt in front of us, but we've uh, uh, Brian and I have signed this for a uh, – um, a little buddy down at uh, Polly's Island will be receiving that here in the next couple of days. But um, we d- we still have a surplus of long sleeve and short sleeve t shirts and sure. hats. I wouldn't say a Not surplus. a surplus. We got a few and hats of and course. we and hats and hats. But you can go to uh, letstalkfish dot com and, and purchase any of our apparel, uh, hats or shirts, whatever we got left uh, for now. Um, all right, Brian, I'm going to figure out how to, for some reason, I'm not seeing any of my comments, and it's probably my own fault. <laughs> Matt's phone's still screwed up. <laughs> Chip, oh, you, 
I know why. I just figured it out. I was on my page live and not the LTF page <laughs> live, which is a number one mistake. Yeah, that you always say every show, make sure you're on the LTF page. While we're on that subject, <laughs> we'll have a trivia giveaway at the end of the show. Got a cool question, a lot of fun. Um, we'll have a giveaway again at the end of the show, and uh, be sure you're on the Let's Talk Fish Facebook page following live if you want to engage and ask questions, especially when Brian starts giving you the lowdown on Chickamauga Report. Um if you have questions and I'm going to be directing those to him, y'all will need to make sure you submit those on the Let's Talk Fish Facebook page. All right. We're ready, All right. Griff. Chickamauga recap. I ended up getting a check, so for me, I count that as a win on Chickamauga. My track record in the summer there is less than stellar. I think I've made one top 10 and a couple of checks, a couple of no checks. So to come out of there with a 10 grand check, I was happy with that. I, Ended up, uh, I was 98th after the first day, moved up to 61st after the second day, and only missed the top 50 cut by just a little bit. But I'm counting that as a good event. That's a very good event for me. I never found nothing. I think the trouble with me at Chick is everybody idles and finds the schools, and they're all so obvious. I spend a lot of my time looking for out-of-the-way stuff, and there's there's not anything out of the way that's the reason everybody's sitting in a circle throwing at one spot all up and down the river like every three or four miles there'll be 10 boats sitting in a circle throwing in the same spot you go five miles 10 boats in a circle throwing at the same spot another five miles 10 <laughs> boats in a circle throwing at the same spot so a lot of checks made throwing in circle i didn't do that i did get a check i was happy with that but um, I tried to mix up the deep and shallow bite. I ended up uh, catching about half of my fish on a quarter-ounce swim jig, fishing grass in five to six feet of water, and uh, caught half of them on a half-ounce jig. And I think that's about all. I think I might have caught one or two on top waters, but most of them come on some form of a jig, either a swim jig or a half-ounce jig flipped in laydowns and stuff like that, fishing grass. I mean... Most of it was grass-related and a few laydowns, a couple of docks and things like that. But I, I never could get the offshore bike going. I found pretty much every school that everybody else had. I just I can't bring myself to get in a circle and throw at one spot with everybody. I just can't do it. Can you fish like that? <laughs> I don't like it. No, I, I, I don't, don't like either. It. And I just I can't I can't do it. I just I can't do it. I, I could fish with with one other boat that's very cooperative on a deep spot, but I can't. Yeah, fish one with or two is three or four or manageable, five. but ten people, no, nah, I can't do that. I just have to. I just got to have the freedom to. If I want to make an adjustment, like change my angle or do right. something like that, right? And exactly. I don't have that option. It drives me nuts. Um, yeah, and it it drives me crazy. <laughs> I, I just I don't do well in situations like that, and I've I've never really done real great on the tennessee river outside of pre-spawn spawn events due to that fact and uh so that that's about how my tournament went you know i was fortunate i feel like to get a check and that was the number one goal was to get paid so i was gonna paid. say go, going into those super <laughs> tournaments for y'all um just cashing a ten thousand dollar check because there are no points right yeah the there's MLS no guys. points so that's that's your goal is to <clears throat> right if, if you come paid. away making money um uh, that's always been brian thrift's Number one goal in fishing it is. is to make money. It remains that's, my that's goal. Our, that's money. all our number one goal. Got to get paid, man. Got to get paid. Got to get paid. Got to get paid. <laughs> um, uh, Ryan Sauer said uh, Smoke didn't sound too happy when he was on the show last week. Um, I wasn't, like, excited, but I wasn't mad. I wasn't mad. No, he had bad service. <laughs> so we couldn't – he was kind of going in and out, and uh, – yeah, it was hard to pick up on everything, but I I I still appreciate you taking our call. Oh yeah, um, we can start now. New just logged on. Oh, so <coughs> uh, we can start now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it, it looked to me like, especially the top ten guys, they were pretty. Uh, it was a good mix of some different things going on. Um, several guys, and obviously Wheeler. Congrats to yeah to Jacob Blew because it away. that was a Blew it away. that was crazy and uh, um. I mean, a heck of a performance. Um, I do know for a fact Jacob has put his time in on that. Like, you know, he moved to Chick a little over three years ago. Yeah, he, and he has. he has probably logged well over 1,000 hours, if I had to guess on that lake. I'd say every bit of it. Every bit of 1,000 mm -hmm. hours on that lake. And and uh, hats off to him, though. I mean, you know, just as well as I do, you can spend a lot of time on a body of water, but that doesn't necessarily yeah, mean. Yeah, that don't mean you catch 10-pounders on that's the right, That's bed, right, that's right. Which that is exactly in a, what we're In a community eat. creek. So yes. that's, that's what blows my mind is, is – 
is when I figured out where he was at, and I, I think he was in Chester Frost when he yeah. caught that 10 Oh, I, I've made my so, mind up. I've got the recipe for success. <laughs> the recipe, Never leave Chester Frost. Recipe for success <laughs> on Chickamauga from mid-May to whenever they're not deep anymore. You, you, you don't <laughs> well, even need you, to practice. You're supposed to know when that is. <laughs> I will never practice in a May-June tournament for Chick again because you got to do two things. You got to go in Chester Frost Park, <laughs> and you got to throw a jig in a top water and fish a little bit offshore stuff, and then all you do is run all the little island heads from there up the river. There's like <laughs> five of them. That's uh, all you got to do. <laughs> Guaranteed, ten grand check. Guaranteed. Absolutely no way around it. Guaranteed ten grand check, and, and like a seventy percent chance of making a top ten. Andy said, so, <laughs> never, "Never need to practice." And the there funny again. thing is, you can start a tournament in Chester Frost and fish the whole thing in probably one tournament day, just about. Maybe not the whole thing, but get darn close. It's not that big. But Reyes was in there too. His yeah. little key grass stretches were in Chester Frost too, which that blew my mind. Um, Andy said, "Andy Esparza, uh, Esparza, excuse me. I hope I said that right, Andy." He said, "Wheeler spoke very highly of you today on BTL. Said that he may not thank you, Wheeler, <laughs> have been able to hit a hundred pounds." If you had hit everything, so I guess y'all were sharing a little bit of water. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Jacob know a lot of the same stuff, which is y'all have shared some notes there over the years. Yeah, over the years we've we've talked to each other, and you know I we made a deal. I told him I wouldn't fish anything he told me, and you know I, I didn't do that. I mean I'm I'm not going to do that to somebody. So yeah, I mean you got <laughs> you got to have a, if you're going to share information with somebody, especially when you go head to head with them on that body of water, and they gave up something especially some something good something off the wall something completely hidden so yes. to speak like a 10 um, pounder like a 10 pounder yes. in Chester i did not no, see I, any 10 pounders that, that's just, that blows my mind <laughs> hey I, I tell you what the whole three days of practice at chick and two days of the tournament i never caught a fish over four pounds until the last 15 minutes of the second day of the tournament I caught a five pounder Oh, you caught a five pounder? That surprised me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when we talked to you after the first day of the tournament, you said it was blowing your mind. No, you did. You ain't caught a three pounder since you've been there. No, I didn't in practice. I never caught. And a you three. didn't catch. Three I pounder didn't catch the first three day, pounder did. the first day of the tournament. Second yeah. day of the tournament, I caught a five and a four. So um, <laughs> that's the only reason I Ron, moved. Ronnie up. Thompson wants to know. What do you guys think about Wheeler taking the wrap off his boat for just this tournament? I don't think he took a wrap off. <laughs> oh, I think well, it was his. No. Oh, so I did? talked to Jacob yesterday about this. I don't know the story, evidently. He. Sorry, Ronnie. <laughs> I think it's genius. And here's why that Academy oh, yeah. boat is very well known on Lake Chickamauga. Yes. And he was able to fish at least two full clean days yeah, without free. people on top of him, mm -hmm. meaning locals following him. Things like that, and I'm not. There's nothing wrong with guys go, going out there to follow guys around and watch them fish. Not a thing wrong with that. Actually, we enjoy it. We appreciate the support. Um, but there's a lot of guys out there that are like to just mark everything that he fishes. And Jacob has worked his absolute tail off, yeah, for three years to find some really, really off the wall places. And I know guys are saying, "Yeah, but he caught a ten pounder in Chester Frost." Well, guess what? Nobody else caught a ten pounder in Chester Frost because he knew something they didn't know about what was inside chester frost so um he 100 percent did that on purpose uh was actually practicing in a different boat if i'm not mistaken oh yeah he was practicing uh, in his uh in aluminum boat. aluminum boat so yeah. I, I hats off the wheeler for, <laughs> it for was funny. being extremely uh <laughs> careful uh oh he did his job very cautious and it paid off in a hundred twenty five thousand dollar paycheck it, um, it was funny in practice like the a lot of people don't know this either, so... What? About him practicing in an aluminum yeah. boat. So, it was either first or second day of practice. I'm... I'm Jeremy Conkright knows it, apparently. Yeah. He, he, he posted it on <laughs> So, I, I was in an area of a lake <laughs> idling around looking at... Graphing some ledges and stuff. And I seen a little John boat run over to a place and start idling. And I'm like, why is he idling? Wheeler told me this on the phone yeah. yesterday. I said, why is it... Why is he idling right there? He, he Why is there an aluminum boat idling in such a sneaky place? Yeah, they, they, <laughs> that ain't right. And then, now I'm like three or 400 yards from it, but I can see it's just an aluminum boat. I'm like, that's got to be Wheeler. I know that's Wheeler. So I crank up and just run right over there to him just to, <laughs> just to let him know I know it's him. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's it. Did he have a hood up or anything? Oh, he had a face mask up. Like, you couldn't see nothing. Looked but, like a ninja. Yeah, like, you couldn't see none of his face. He, like, he did a little half look around and then turned back around like, well, maybe if I don't acknowledge he's here, he'll go away. But that didn't work. I could come up on him anyway. I said, Wheeler, what you doing? Oh, man, you know, looking around. And I said, I knew that was you. He should have kept the face mask up and never said a word. I still knew it was him. <laughs> I said, I knew it was you from a half a mile away because nobody would be idling right here. Like, I'd done idled it and see if there were anything there, and there wasn't anything there. So, there you go. So, there wasn't anything there? <laughs> no, not on that particular place. That's oh, where, okay. That's where the 10-pounder came from. But it no, that was not <laughs> yeah, where the 10 There was one dot, one dot on his screen. Um, <laughs> no, it's probably, I guess it's a place that they have gotten before, obviously. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been idling it. But he uh, – um, I think I think it was a genius move. Obviously oh yeah, it paid off. like it's, and that's what <laughs> it's going to come down to for you know. I've this is not like this is a new thing. Somebody practicing out of a different boat or fishing right. an event it's out of a different for years. boat. T- pretty much every event we go to, that's a high profile event, and there is a high profile pro that lives there. <laughs> They do the same thing. I can, I mean, I can remember Scott Suggs doing it when we fished the Forestwood Cup at Wachita. Anthony Gagliardi did it when we fished the Cup at Murray. I mean, it's it happens about every major event where you've got a big time. And if I'm not mistaken, the one Gagliardi won. I was about yeah. to say Gagliardi won that cup, and Suggs won that cup. And Suggs won that cup. <laughs> there you go. So there you go. <laughs> um, well, they 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 do know some of those off the wall places from spending so much time on those fisheries, right. and I don't blame them one bit. Um, Somebody said, is that what Thrift and Matt do on Moss? Absolutely not. You cannot hide on Moss. I don't care what kind of boat you're in. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Um, <laughs> Ryan Sowers wants to know if you drink more Sundrop when you're doing better or worse in a tournament. Do you drink more when you're doing worse nah, or more when just, you're doing better? Even kill. It's even. Yeah, it's even. It's an even 30 gallons no matter it's what. It's no, I, I drank four two a day. I've a limited day. myself to two a day. <laughs> Two, two a day. Two, two ounces? sun drop, two okay. 20 ounce sun drops two a day. Two heavy bags. Two heavy bags. When I'm at home, I've, I'll have like one regular and one diet. Try to keep the fatness to a minimum. But, uh, did you say it? fatness? Fatness. He yes. just said keep the fatness <laughs> to a minimum. Yeah. Um, what boat number did you draw, Ryan Wilson, though? Uh, the first day I was boat 60 something, I believe. And I think the second day I was like 145, something like that. Okay. Um, I had no trouble getting on the place I wanted to start because evidently it sucked. Nobody else wanted to start there. <laughs> so that, that, lucky for me, I you had caught, that going. You caught fish there. Yeah, lucky for me, I had that going. So. <laughs> um, Dalton Pratt said, what's wrong with Wheeler's live wells? He was filling them with his cooler. Did he have a pump or something? I didn't wow. see that. If he, he was doing that, I could out. imagine he had ice in the cooler and it was like a research type deal to keep the live well water cooler, I would think. Yeah, cause, that would cause, make sense. Well, yeah, you don't have to fill them, I guess, with your right. cooler manually. You can just put that back up. Right. Uh, and I, that's a tip for a, most, a lot of – I'm sure most of you guys know that, but if you don't and you ever have your pumps go out, just throw your boat in reverse and yeah. start backing especially up. especially make sure you don't have your live well plugged, obviously. That's right. Your overflow's got to be open, and it'll, it'll come in through those overflow holes, and you can fill it up quick. Um, all right. So – Let's see. Well, you talked about how you caught them every day. Grass was kind of the main deal. What was yeah? What was grass funny, was the main deal. What was funny is is we were talking about this the other day, and I don't I, I don't think I was talking to you. I was talking. It might have been Wheeler I was talking to, but we we're talking about how a lot of these ledge tournaments, these these Tennessee River tournaments, especially, um, are starting to transition over the past few years to more of a uh, more diverse top ten. When it comes down to it, it's almost like you have to uh, spread spread it out from deep to shallow because and it's because in my opinion uh the advancement in electronics and how knowledgeable the younger generation is coming into this sport. right um what's your thoughts on that i I agree a hundred percent i mean it's it's not like you know 20 years ago when larry nixon or somebody was the only one out on a ledge fritz (laughs) was the only one out on a ledge i mean now when you go to a tva lake uh, like on the tennessee river everybody's going there with the intent to catch you know ledge fish that are schooled up because i mean let's face it it's fun that's what i want to do i can't make it happen most of the time but that's what i want to (laughs) do so i mean that's just part of the game it's like going to uh 
you know, going to Okeechobee in February, I mean, you want to be flipping reeds or something like that. That's what you want to do because that's how you catch big fish. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But with the advancement in electronics today, you know, it everybody's kind of on a level playing field. It's not like Fritz riding across the lake looking at his flasher and seeing a little blip and be like, oh, what was that? And turning around and catching 4,000 pounds on a ledge that <laughs> nobody's ever fished before. That doesn't happen anymore. That don't happen. <laughs> uh, what's up, Ryan? Hey, Derek. Uh, what what was the water temp there at Chick? Um, I don't really know. I'm thinking it was in the, in the 80s. Yeah, low 80s is what I'm thinking it was. I don't remember ever really looking at it. But I just I knew it was hot, and that's all that mattered. <laughs> when throwing a big worm, when do you pick up a ribbon tail over a straight tail and vice versa? You know, <laughs> this is something I experimented with that you follow a little bit in brush piles because obviously that's always – typically there's a strong worm bite there. And, I, you know, I had both tied on, and I, and I offer them both. And, I, you know, it seems like when I can – of course, it seems like they'll bite – like, I had a Magnum Trick Worm Texas rig. I had a big 11-inch ribbon tail worm Texas rig. And it seems like when I'm working a bait through limbs and brush piles and I know that it's going to be coming up over something that extends quite a bit off the bottom and there's going to be a decent fall behind it, where a lot of your bites come from is on the fall, I like something that has a little bit of action. Um, it seems like the, the big Magnum Trick Worms and things like that, uh, the big bulky straight tail worms, I get bit a little bit better when it's more of a bottom bite, like dragging it on the bottom. Um, but when, I mean, what about you, Brian? I, I was going to say the exact same thing. <gasps> I mean, to me, the the curly tail worm is a reaction bite you get on the fall. <clears throat> Just like Matt said, if you're fishing it through a high brush pile, or even if you're stroking a worm yeah. on ledges, like where you're ripping it way up off the bottom and letting it fall, getting that reaction strike. I like a curly tail worm better, but if it's something I'm dragging or fishing slow, like if I'm, even if I'm fishing brush and I'm fishing it really slow, like meticulously dragging it through the limbs and through rocks or something like that, I do like a straight tail worm better. And, um, but if I'm getting a reaction bite, I'd re I, I tend to go to a curly tail. Question of the year from Jeremiah. What is it? You just admitted to everybody that you only you've limited yourself to two sum drops per day while you're on the boat. Right. What is your next beverage of choice since you're only drinking two sun drops? Oh, that's simple. Um I gotta think of the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> Body armor. Body armor. Yeah. Dude, I've got into those too. Dude, those the strawberry are banana good. is my favorite. I like the uh berry blackout and some kind of lemonade. The body armors. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it and that's that's it's just uh, like souped up Gatorade, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it is. Except it tastes way better. Yeah, it's good. It's it is better than Gatorade, in my opinion. I haven't yeah. had one. They're like body armors. They sell them about everywhere yeah. now. They're, uh, I drink a lot of them. Like I got to where I really started liking them was back in February when I had the flu and got quarantined. Allie bought me a bunch of them just to make sure I stayed hydrated, and they're really good. You got addicted to them. I didn't get addicted, but they're good. <laughs> I don't know if they're good for you, but they Probably. claim they got vitamins and stuff. So, you know, why not? Okay, I didn't know this question from <laughs> Zach Talent, um, and you can answer this. He said, what's the deal with FLW having a having no rule against culling dead fish? I was very disappointed to see that on live. Apparently, somebody must have culled a dead fish on live, maybe. Um, it, I, it's possible. I mean, they, they never is, had that, I don't think. No, we've, the FLW's never had a no culling dead fish rule. Which I think that's a stupid rule anyway, because if you, let's face it, if you bring in a dead fish to a weigh-in, they're going to throw it in a trash can. It's going to get absolutely no use for nobody or no thing. Well, now, wait a if minute. If you call a dead a fish A lot of the organizations the, have places set up to take those eh, fish. They say that, but I don't know if it actually happens. <laughs> <laughs> but if you cull a dead fish and you throw it back in the lake, something's going to eat it. It may be a turtle. It's going to, you know, provide substance somewhere. It's not going to go to waste. No, it's sure. not going to go to waste. It's not going to go in a trash can. So I don't see any tr issue with culling a dead fish. I mean, it's <clears throat> it's something that happens, and pretty much every angler that fishes professionally does everything they absolutely can to keep fish alive i mean let's we let's face it we we've all invested hundreds and hundreds of dollars every year to just to keep fish alive i mean from a th marine oxygenator g juice um 
needles to fizz deep fish, everything like that. But still, you're going to have fish that get hooked deep or that eat the bait upside down, get hooked in the tongue or in the gill, something like that. It's, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And there's really nothing you can do to stop that from happening. So even if you go to barbless hooks, I mean, you're still going to hook fish in the gills and have a few mortalities throughout the course of a year. But no angler wants to kill fish. So no, it's, it's our job to keep them alive. Right, exactly. And the, so I don't see any problem with calling them. <clears> yeah, and, and a tough situation to be in would be to have a potential winning stringer in your box and your smallest fish be dead. Right. And you have to end up weighing it in. Well, technically, technically, I'm going to lose to you, but I may have actually beat you in overall weight. I just wasn't allowed to get rid of that fish. Right. And, exactly. and I, that's that's the aspect that I'm not a fan of. because. Right. And I, I mean, I hear stories all the time of people, oh, I, my live whales quit and I didn't know it and I had three 12 inchers in there and they died and I couldn't cull them, so I lost $7,000 this week. That's dumb. Yeah, that's that's t- that's tough to swallow. <laughs> that's tough to swallow. Um, all right, so Christopher Teague said body armors are legit. I saw a question about. So we were talking about the worm, the straight tail worm, and the uh, the curly the ribbon tail type worm. Um, the uh, the same for jig trailers. Scott Fell wanted to know if that that goes the same. That, does that go the same for jig trailers? And to me, it absolutely does. Yes. Um, same same concept. Uh, especially when you're hopping a jig or stroking a jig or swimming like, it something yeah or swimming it i like something that's got some action um, um andy as far as it asks uh, what do you all think of the study that says citric acid from sodas does not stop bleeding and doesn't work that study is a lie <laughs> <laughs> i was about to say we can both vouch from yes. personal experience that that's not true yeah and um sun dry is it the citric acid or is it some other ingredient don't it? we don't know if it's the citric acid <laughs> but or it not, works. so we can't vouch for that <laughs> all we can tell you is that it does work it does work and guaranteed it works. where's that study <laughs> send us a link to that study because yes. we might want to get them on the show and and bring a we might yeah never mind we're not gonna we're not i gonna know i can have one weekend. that's bleeding like crazy <laughs> and nine Damn, times out of ten yeah. he's gonna die and if you pour a little bit of sun drop or mountain dew in his mouth He's the happiest one in the live well at way in time. I know that. Uh, I, uh, I had a qu- couple questions about the new Merc on the back of the Ranger. And uh, um, I, it, I have 2.4 hours on it, so I have surpassed my initial two hours of break-in. Uh, very impressed with it. I, I'm not going to lie. You know, I my biggest thing leaving the G2 was a whole shot. G2's got phenomenal mid-range and, and extremely good top end. Um super quiet uh you know i'm not like a like an old school car guy so i'm gonna have to get used to when you crank that thing up it literally sounds yeah, like a harley it. davidson cranking yeah, up or something. No. <laughs> um, but other than that uh, i really I, I am impressed it's got a really good mid-range the whole shot's been great um i'm running a 23 pitch uh fury and i think it's a 23 23 three blade fury and um I, since I've, I've broken the two hour mark on it now that's something that's something I kept calling Trent up at Angler's Choice, and I was like, "What I got to do to break this thing in again? We haven't broken an engine in no. since E Tech came out in two thousand. That was the beauty of it, or whatever everywhere. it was. No we never in. had to break an engine in. <laughs> so, breaking an engine in is actually a new thing for Brian and myself. So, um, I, I have finally passed the two hour mark, which means I can open it up wide open. So, um, but not for extended periods, right? Right. It's like you, five minutes or so. I'll, I'll so double you, check. My well, manual. you have to put 10 hours on it before you can. I think it's 10 total. Yeah. Yeah. Before you can run like from here to like Ticonderoga wide open or something. Yeah. So, um, I am impressed with it. It's a, it's a, um, it's a pretty cool engine. One thing that I wish they would do, and maybe Mercury's watching, but, and they may already have it. So, one thing that the, the G2 had is the G2 pedal, the G2 hot foot. Um, I am running a regular hot foot in there, and no complaints there except for when you when you're dealing with those pedals and you're dealing with um, the G2 pedal, which was similar to that of your pedal in your car or your truck. Yeah. Um, the re- the space that it takes up in your underneath your console there and the reaction time, the way that thing reacts to me, um, and it's a lot. It's it, it you know it just simply plugs in as opposed to having a big spring and things like that. Um, I would like to see Mercury try to come out with some kind of pedal that is very, very similar to the G2 pedal. And they might already have it. I may sound like an idiot because they might already have it. But, I have no idea. Um, I, definitely not. What? 
You'd never do that. Oh, <laughs> 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 just being a funny guy. Um, but yeah. I think I think they had something similar with the Verado when they had it, maybe. Um, if I'm not mistaken, because it was a DTS system, digital throttle system like the Merc. Uh, yeah, Verado did have that. So may still do. I may, don't know that same pedal system. I think I'm not sure. Okay. Um, all right. So. Here's a good question. Let's go down to, to Drew. He said, how do y'all oh, feel yeah. <laughs> about contestants fishing for retread fish in a tournament? Um, I know a lot of guys that have made a lot of money lot and of even money won made. tournaments yeah, off of retread lot of tournaments fish. Won. Um, <laughs> what's your thoughts on that, Brian? I mean, the, the, the organizations, I'll say real quick first that the organizations do their best to create an off-limits area right. to where it hopefully eliminates that option. But... Brian and I both know that those fish don't stay in a very small confined area, and if that off limits is extremely small, you can typically find something adjacent to that off limits to yeah. where you can catch quote retread fish. But then there's the other factor of there being other ramps all over the lake where tournaments go out of all the time, right? And you're catching quote retreads there. Um, yeah, there's pretty much any public boat ramp on any lake. If you catch a fish within two or three hundred yards of it, there's a good chance it's a retread fish. But, um, I mean, as far as major tournaments go, I know, like, at Chick, the whole creek we went out of, which was, like, two and a half miles long, the was off creek. limits. Yeah, that's and, a big, uh, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, to me. and, you know, they, they try to limit that. But, you know, some places are just more conducive to, to that. I know there's, there's certain lakes and certain fisheries we went to where, you know, retread fish were a pretty good option the third and fourth day of the events. I mean... I'm I'm not going to tell you I haven't ever fished for them because pretty much every top ten where we were on a lake that was conducive and had a good area for where retreads could set up, you know, I'd stop and give it 20 or 30 minutes in the morning just to get a limit and fish calmer and go try to win the event the last five or six hours. So there, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm going to agree. It's, it, it almost takes a lot more uh, – versatility to catch those retreads consistently than it does other fish right exactly <laughs> exactly um i think I, the biggest thing is it makes the angler fish with more confidence because hey they just turned loose so many thousand fish right here surely to god i can catch one either <laughs> either more confidence or at the end of the day you've lost all confidence. yeah or you've one lost all confidence <laughs> one, or the other, there. one or the other <laughs> um so here's a uh a couple interesting questions. I want to address Derek's first. He says, Matt, is a two-pound penalty for six fish too harsh? Uh, you're not doing anything to gain an advantage. Seems a bit steep to me. That's a great question, Derek. And, and we have to rely on the tournament organizations to assess penalties based on the severity of, you know, the uh, the rule that they broke. Yeah. Um, like that rule not long ago was a complete disqualification. Yeah. So – <laughs> to answer your question, it's a lot less harsh than it was. Yes, very, um, very. <laughs> but that being said, is two pounds a lot? Yeah, two pounds is a ton. Um, well, when your wheeler leading by 14, basically all it did was turn his 10-pounder into an 8-pounder, and he still won by 12 pounds or whatever it was. Right, or 14 exactly. Pounds. Um, <laughs> so it depends on the situation. You know, I've seen uh, – you know, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I have, knock on wood, have never done that. If I did, I would probably think two pen, two pounds is way too much. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a, it's about right because it used to be a complete disqualification. Like you could make, I mean, a minor slip if you're not thinking properly and you've lost your whole tournament pretty much. I mean, it could ruin your whole year. Say that event you finish a hundred and something in the points, you don't make the championship, you don't make any money. I mean, that could ruin your whole year just for one you know for lack of a better word brain fart so i i don't think that's the right punishment and then it i think at one time wasn't it you have to throw back your biggest fish or something like that i think it yeah i've, I've seen yeah, that it was. penalty it was something like you had to release yeah. your largest fish but i think now with the two pound two pound penalty throw back your smallest fish i, I think that's the the best penalty it, at for least it. it's a consistent penalty because throwing back your larger fish could really i mean that could fluctuate too much right exactly especially what if you're at okeechobee and you got eight pounder in there yeah you know or what if you're at moss and you got a three pounder in there so it's, the difference meaning, yeah meaning the difference is not the same you right know? So, it, it, exactly <laughs> so i and i think it's like i don't think it's nobody trying to it's not like somebody's out there actively cheating trying to gain an advantage it's just a small slip like 
caught up in the moment. Oh man, turn myself in. Two pound penalty. It is what it is. Um, calling a well, I don't know what the penalty is for calling a dead fish. Zach Talent want to know is calling a dead fish worse than accidentally making cast with six in the live well. Uh, <clears throat> there's no penalty at FLW. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm not real sure. And, and I mean, we can't call a dead fish in bass, but I. I'd be lying if I said I knew what the penalty was. I just make for darn sure I don't throw a dead one back in the water. Um, all right. So, uh, oh, and Andy said it's illegal in Indiana to release a dead fish. It's in the regulation book. Um, there you go. Well, I don't remember the last time FLW had a tournament in Indiana either, do you? Never, I believe. Never. He said never. <laughs> well, well, I'm sure they have. That BFLs. solves that problem. I'm sure they have BFLs and stuff. So, Well, they probably adjust that rule yeah, based I mean, on state regulations. And that's the thing about most rules. Like, it's like a length limit rule. I mean, it goes by lake or state regulations. I mean, if we come to Lake Norman, we got a 14-inch length limit. We go to Tennessee River, it's 15 inches. So you kind of got to go by state laws, whatever the state says, and that's that's what you have to go by. Um, Devin had a pretty good point, too. He said calling's part of the game. If other guys are taking five minutes to call and you just throw a six fish in a live well, get back to a school that's that pretty is fired true. up, that's a significant advantage, and that can be – Given the situation, Devin, that can be extremely accurate. So, I mean, we've all had instances where we got a school fired up, and if we don't throw in there for 10 minutes, it's going to die off. So, right. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that can be a big deal. But, uh, of course, in Jacob's defense, you know, he, he and he told me this on the phone. He, I'm sure he talked about it on his YouTube. Guys said he posted on his YouTube about doing that. Um, <laughs> he caught a 10-pounder, and he was so jacked up. He just threw it in a live Oh, ball. yeah. I mean, he was, you know, he was showing the camera and talking about it, and then he just, he didn't even, he didn't even realize that that was a six fish. He threw it in there and made another cast, and as soon as he made that cast, though, he figured it out. Yeah. You know, it didn't, it's not like it took him a while. Right. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, yeah, you're right. Calling's part of the game, and if, uh, you know, if, if it takes you four or five or six minutes to call one out, uh, that, that can definitely have an impact on, on exactly. a deep school of fish that you've got fired up. So, all right. Let's see. We talked about that. Um, Ryan Sowers, I have not moved my horn button in my Ranger yet. <laughs> Still the same spot it was, but I'm completely aware of where it is now. So, um, yeah, that that the G2 pedal was electronic pedal, Andrew. So that's uh, so is the you can't <clears throat> choose hand throttle. Or, you can. You oh, can. You, you can. So throw. yes. So actually, on the Mercury throttle, yeah, itself. On the side of it, there's two cool features. One is a button that you can change from hand to foot. Yeah. Another one, which we had on our gauge on our G2s, another one is a start-stop button. Ah. Meaning if your keypad on your Ranger goes out or something you crazy goes haywire. Oh, you know how we used oh, to have to carry smart. like a spare key? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't have to do that anymore. You can hit start on the... You just hit start on the throttle. That's pretty smart. Yeah, so that, that that's a good smart. deal. Make sure, make sure you have that. Make sure you have that. Um... If smoke can change engines, he can switch to an Ultrax. I doubt it. <laughs> hey, there's two people. <laughs> at Lake Chickamauga, you, there's I, the one other boat with the four treks on it. He won. No. Oh. It was Wheeler's John But he Wheeler. did make the top ten, and he's won a couple of tournaments. Who was that. it? John Cox. Of course. Of all people, <laughs> John had a four treks. That does not surprise me one bit. <laughs> He, right. he used to have oil tricks. He'd come back to the four tricks. <laughs> uh, four tricks is a I, good trolling motor. That doesn't surprise it's me good. at all. I, no, I, no, I agree 100%. It's a good trolling motor. It's a good trolling motor. But there's got... You, you, I Maybe just, the best. I can't buy the fact that you sit here and look me in the eye and say there's not any times that you wish you'd have had a spot lock feature. Oh, there are times. Okay. All right. I there just wanted times. to clarify that. Like, I don't have anything against the oil tricks, but I just like the four tricks. Okay. I, like I can it. accept that. I like it a lot. Um, since all this live coverage, James Bryant said he's noticed a lot of pros fishing near boat ramps lately. Well, that's for a lot of reasons, James. Um, we talked about the retread deal. Obviously, yeah. there's a lot of fish that live around landings that where there's lots of tournaments go out of. But landings in general and boat ramps in general can hold a lot of bass. Yes. For many reasons. Um, there's all kinds of things that grow on those boat ramps. There's rocks. There's veins that run between those ramps when they build them. Um, there's good underwater transitions. There's different contour changes. There's a lot of places for fish to set up. There's a lot of reasons for bait and bluegill to be there. Um, if you want to 
Keep, I, keep pretty, going, Brian. I mean, there's like ten thousand reasons pretty to fish good, around man. a boat ramp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just saying, it's not. You know, there's, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, that you, every, if I go to a lake that's got twenty five boat ramps on, I'm gonna check every single one of them and practice. It's just, it's just a given. I'm going to. Um, I don't do that. It, oh, well, I am. Yeah, you lie. You, I don't. You fish boat ramps as good as I never anybody. went in Chester Frost all week. Basically. We'll see. See what happens. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I said from now on, I don't need to practice there because yeah. that's where I'm going. That's true. I'm just going to go Chester if, Frost. If, if you could just <laughs> idle Chester fish. You could idle Chester Frost in like a day of practice, and you oh, could learn every like an hour. You could do it. Practice. You could learn every little like nook and cranny in there. And when you see a tournament unfold like Chick did, it just makes you kind of go back and like want to punch yourself in the face. Not really. It would me. I mean, it did me. I wasn't even there, but I was just like. <laughs> so Reyes almost won in Chester Frost. Wheeler, Wheeler pretty much won in Chester yeah, Frost. I don't know how many he caught in there, but he <laughs> caught a lot, I think. Yeah, I had several. Um, including a ten pounder, but yes, um, <laughs> yeah, that, but it, but still, there's a there's there's a reason those boys caught them and nobody else did because they figured even out. you follow. Did anybody catch them near the ramp there at Cowicky at you follow? That is a bass hot spot on you follow. Believe it or was. not, not to my knowledge, nobody that made the top ten was fishing in that creek. Really? Nope. That's I, right. To my knowledge. Um, now we're a, a few key fish caught out of that creek, I'm sure. Yeah. But the majority of the fish were the lower fifty percent of the lake. Yeah. Um, really, from Calwicky down, yeah. I wouldn't say the lower fifty. I, I guess that it kind of is the fifty percent because it goes forever. Yeah, it goes forever. way up there. Um, I know two times I finished <clears throat> second at Ufala. Uh, both times I was beat by people fishing with inside of the rap at Calwicky. <laughs> and was, <laughs> was just a question, but was that earlier in the year? Because it seems like Calwicky. Um, Always has fish in it, obviously, but it right. seems like in the springtime because of the shallow vegetation and all the little bitty. Um, there's just so much. There's so much good shallow cover in there. Right. I could see it really shining and there's in March a and April. Very defined creek channel. Well, actually, one was in March. It okay. was a FLW series event. I finished second in, and then one mostly pre spawn. Yeah, mostly pre, pretty much all pre spawn. And the the other time was when Randy Haynes won in May, which was post spawn. I finished second, and he caught all his fish in Cowie. Hmm. Okay. So. Um, well, there's Andrew Alexander. Let us know that Mike Huff's big fish on day one came super close to the launch at Ufala. <laughs> he said he marshaled with him that day. It was a 612. Uh, so that was Oh, uh, James said you was near a boat ramp at <clears throat> Ufala some, too. I was? Look at this thing trying to play it all. No, I'm seriously trying to think. Which, which which boat ramp was it? James gave me the winky face. We don't have no secrets on Let's Talk Fish. You can go ahead and post in the feed which boat ramp it was because I'm trying to figure out which one it was. Oh, I know which one it was. I had to think about that for a minute. Yeah, but, um, yeah, that's definitely not a secret place. <laughs> Where was it? Um, it. No secrets. Well, I don't know the name of the boat ramp, so I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> I mean, I, there's a there's lots of boat ramps on the lake, but it was a boat ramp that was – not too f- terribly far from Calwicky, going down the lake on the on left. the right, on the left, on the left. Right. Yeah, before you get to the bridge. Before you get to the bridge. Oh yeah, yeah. That is a popular place. Um, but I, I don't have, know the name of that one either. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> the name of any of these places, so um, I can't I can't answer that question. What's up, Adam Savage? He just jumped in. Uh, let's see. Andy said Grant wants to ask Jeff if he can post a Mister Wilson feeding on YouTube. It's still tough. Still got some odd hours. At the pet store. The pet well, store. what you might could do is just run a little video of his next feeding and maybe post it up for the for the group and throw it on YouTube. So yeah, yeah we, we're we're dealing with some odd hours with the pet store guys where we buy our fish. What to, are they closing at now? Like it's four like four o'clock. Four, yeah. yeah, so they don't stay alive. We, we basically, be, we'd be calling a lot of dead fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be calling a lot of dead fish. <laughs> Mister Wilson ain't prejudiced. You throw a dead one in there, he'll eat it. They didn't have any fish. No, I don't know. No, dude, he's he. Oh, really? He's getting picky in his old yeah, age. You, you have to move him a little bit. They didn't have any feeders today, so I had to go with the big boys. Oh, the big ones again? Yeah. You fed him the big big ones, dude. He gets a lot. <laughs> he gets a lot. Like the five dollar ones. Yeah, but uh, he gave me four, four for they got it for a dollar <laughs> a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff goes to the pet store. He did this the other week, and he's like, "We get the hookup." We do get. We've bought a lot of fish there for Mister Wilson over the last three. But years. They, we we feed them these little feeder fish, obviously, and they're I guess they're goldfish. I don't know what they are. They're not goldfish. They're not goldfish. No. They're not goldfish. <laughs> they're just golden color. They're feeder. They're gold colored feeder fish. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> they're baby carp. Nobody nobody would have a problem with a with that. golden. They're hue. baby carp. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, 
Jeff goes like two weeks ago, and they don't. They're out of the the feeder gold colored fish. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, and all they had was the big. I don't even know we should talk the about this. Googly eyed the big googly eyed. The big googly eyed with the, the big ones, the big feathered tail. The you ones know, like that aren't the food. Peacock tail. The ones they that are aren't food. food. Just presented to the right fish the like Mr. Wilson. They, they food. <laughs> so Jeff bought two of those for ten dollars <laughs> <laughs> and dropped them in there and of course he you know Well they he got did four the of them for four dollars, so we made up the difference. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he ate them in about four seconds. Yeah. He was hungry. Yeah. Um, he looks a little skinny. We're I got to dress up real quick. Little so he looks good. Oh, KG Ormond said, "Have you fatter than that?" Yeah, hey, I don't think I don't think those those koi or whatever we're feeding <laughs> are actually are actually as healthy for him as the feeder gold colored minnow fish only eating them type twice. things. But he doesn't he doesn't look as fat today for some. He did doesn't. he eat today? Yeah. Okay, he ate today. About lunchtime. About lunchtime. Okay. We'll uh. We'll hook him if up. If I'd have known I was going to get him for a dollar, I'd have got a lot more, but I wasn't spending $20 on fish. <laughs> Mike Harris said, why don't we go to Moss with a casting net for Mr. Wilson food? Yeah, Jeff, why don't you just go to Moss with a casting net for, for food for Mr. Wilson? I'd rather just buy him. <laughs> it is easier. Well, yeah, it's much it's easier. much easier. <laughs> Team Cook Bass Fishing said, what's up with Wheeler getting waypoints from a preacher on day one? Waypoint Wheeler wins again. Well, Team Cook, if you can prove that to me, then by yeah. all means get after it, son, because uh, – I don't like rumors uh, until I don't, I don't like anybody accusing anybody of anything until they're proven guilty. And if he's proven guilty, then hey, I'll uh, I'll stand against him as fast as I'll stand up for him. But um, I've known Wheeler for a long time, and let me tell you something about that kid. He works as hard as anybody he as there is everybody. in the industry, and he had it from day one, from the time he was 15, 16 years old. Uh, I've heard enough stories about that guy. And uh, he's lived and breathed it all his life. We roomed together for four years on the FLW tour. Brian knows him very well over the years, and uh, he's he's one of the best there is in the game right now. He's at the top of his game. He's fishing clean. He's fishing well, making good decisions, and uh, and, and he's, he's still out working everybody. And he's out working people. He is. He 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 spends as much time on the water, uh, even when he's not fishing tournaments, as anybody that I know. So uh, I'm gonna squash that right now. And unless unless you have some facts to back that up. Um, I guess that's all I got to say about that. I agree with that. You agree with that? All I right. agree with that. Thrift's with me. <laughs> Thrift, uh, you looking forward to Sturgeon Bay? Chris Shoemaker wants to know. I, I am looking forward to it. I've never been there. I know absolutely nothing about it. And that that makes it exciting for me. I love going places I've never been. But I'm not going to say I'm a little disappointed that we're not going to Champlain because I really wanted to go back to Champlain this year. Um, but you know, to have the opportunity to go somewhere I've never been before, that, that is exciting. And just the, the thrill of the unknown, not knowing what to expect, what's out there. I get to go look at it for the first time with, you know, no preconceived notions. And I, I love that when it comes to bass fishing, especially tournaments. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, dude. I get excited. Like <laughs> I know a lot of guys were like, Oh, y'all are lucky. The Sabine river got canceled this year. Because it's a tough fishery historically, blah, 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 blah. But I love going to new fisheries. I don't I do care too. if I'm going to catch six pounds or 25 pounds. I love going to new fisheries. That's yeah. all there is to Except it. Except rivers. I don't want to go to any new <laughs> so rivers. So you wouldn't have, you, I wouldn't want you would have been happy with the Sabine River cancellation. Yes. Because it's river. Thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. On the end of it. Uh, you've done well at rivers, though. I mean, you've had good finishes at Potomac. Name one. Potomac? You made a top ten there one time, didn't you? Once. Well, that's a good finish in the river. What? <laughs> I'm like one for 12 at the Potomac River. <laughs> <laughs> one for 12. Uh, let's see. The Detroit River, you've done really well there. <laughs> Maybe you weren't fishing the river. You might have been fishing. I was river. fishing. Okay. That, that, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I tried, to, I tried to slide one in on you there. How about Mississippi River? What I've only been, been there once. River? I didn't get a check. So i got to keep thinking of more rivers. I made one top ten at the Red River. Okay, that's right. So I'm like one for four there. Well, one for four. We ain't been there four. Yeah, I guess we have been there four times. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Was your top ten in the cup there? Yes. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> if we, if uh, you're like Wheeler, if you're going to top ten, it's going to be in a cup. Like on the worst, on what you call your worst, uh, your worst enemies in the rivers. Yes. You, uh. I hate rivers. But then you almost win the cup there. 
Uh, that's the one at Tharp one, right? Yes. Yeah. Fishing right next to the ramp. Exactly. Might I add, right beside <laughs> the ramp. Uh, right beside the ramp. Literally, right rivers beside are the good ramp. retread places. Just remember that. If you're ever on a river, catch retreads because rivers have very few bass in them anyway, <laughs> and most of them have been caught and hauled to the boat ramp. So that's why you fish <laughs> near the boat ramp. There's a river. Um. Let's see. Uh, oh, Alan. Alan said that Drew Cook probably caught some of them on uh, some of his fish in Kawiki. So uh, I didn't know that, but uh, that's interesting. Um, Jeremy Conker, I ain't a good point though. Watching like from a fan standpoint, river tournaments can be a lot of fun to watch because a lot of times it is a bank beating tournament. And I and I'd be lying if I said when I'm when I'm watching fishing on TV or the internet or whatever, live, you know, live coverage. I like watching somebody flip laydowns or throw a spinnerbait by a bush or skip a jig under a dock more than I do throwing off the bank. Personally, as far as an entertainment aspect of it. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so so what about you, Jeff? You watch fishing, you watch live coverage. Would you rather see somebody trying to flip a jig inside Mr. Wilson's aquarium, (laughs) a.k.a. a laydown log? (laughs) and jack a five pounder and then go to a grass mat and punch it and catch a five pounder or would you rather somebody sit out there in open water throwing a worm catching them every cast uh, i want to see the big boys i don't really care about every cast no I, I, <laughs> and they're all big it's really cast. not my question they're, they're all big saying, they're would, big you rather, would you rather watch somebody <laughs> fish yeah that was bad I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather some, i would personally rather some, watch somebody flipping yeah, like flipping or power fishing the yeah. bank or something. Doing, 100%. Yeah, okay. Or top water fishing. Obviously, top Absolutely. water fishing would be at the top of <laughs> yes. the charts. For, um, all right. That's, we're, Je- Is that I, the right that, answer? That's why I normally ask Brian I, questions no instead idea. of Jeff. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, Mike Harris said, but Chick is the Tennessee River. And I don't like the but Tennessee But Mike, just, he just got done saying he didn't like Chick either. No, so. I like the Tennessee River like February, March, and a little piece of April. I don't like it after that. Hey, I, I do. Bruce Gallup, that's a good point, Bruce. And I'll see Bruce tomorrow. We're going down to visit them at the beach. Um, what? He said St. John's River. I actually I ain't th- never been there. Either. I actually think that you would like that better because it, it's still a river system, but the way you like to fish. There's lakes, though. There's lakes. I there's the lake. all kinds of offshore structure. There's uh, there's a lot of options. Yeah, So I like options. you're not a fan of typical Florida like myself. No. I'm not a fan of going to Toho or Okeechobee, a big old bowl of grass. I like, I like Toho now. Oh, all of a sudden you like Toho. I like Toho now. Okay, all of a sudden you like Toho. Yeah. That's just because you got to go in the summertime and fish off I like it summer. I like it summer. All right. <laughs> so, St. John's is like Florida, like Toho mixed with the Tennessee River system, mixed with a bunch of farm ponds with lily pads, mixed in with canals and riprap and... Like it's it's got everything. Like it's it's pretty cool fishery. It's pretty 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 dynamic. But um, and there's a lot of options if they don't if they don't uh, put restrictions on where you can go. It's a pretty cool deal. Um, it can be super tough, obviously, or it can be amazing. Um, what's that's typical Florida? There's really nowhere in between where it's just kind of good. That's true. It's usually really good or really bad. Um, all right. There, yeah, Tony said he'd rather watch shallow water flipping bite on lives. Yeah, I mean, I'd like. Well, I'd rather watch somebody throwing a frog around or something. You know, I mean, that's what if I'm catching yeah, them too. on a walking bait, like over thirty feet of water. I'm good like, with that. I'm good with that now. That's if, you're get, if you're getting top water, yeah. But how many times does that happen? Like on live? Never. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm good with it, but, but it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> it could, they catch in big giant spots over super yeah. deep water on top water, so. Um. All right, a couple more questions. We're going to run out of time. We have a giveaway tonight sponsored by our presenting sponsor, Angler's Choice Marine. And we have a shirt and a hat and some goodies from Angler's Choice to give away. Got a pretty, All kind of goodies. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet little trivia question that we worked up for you all tonight, too. Um, Keep talking and you will shut up, Jeff. give the answer away. So. <laughs> I'm not going to yep. give the answer away. Uh, you see a couple questions we need to hit up, Brian, before we call it a night here. I'll be right back. Um, no, nah, everybody's just kind of second me that most rivers are no good. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. Said everybody's in agreement that most rivers are no good. Most rivers are no good. <laughs> well, we, here's one from Brian Clary that's interesting. What is the longest run you've had to make during a tournament? What's yours? 
Uh, you go first because I'm gonna think about it for a minute. Mine obviously was on a river because there's very few bass and you got to get from where one lives. I <laughs> ran uh, 87 miles one way on the Red River one time. Mine's not near that far. Where was that? It was on the Red River. <laughs> oh, so you went to like Pool Three? Yes. Yeah, Pool Three. Yes. Way down Pool Three. <clears throat> like on the other end of Pool Three. Yes. Okay. Um, mine's under 60 miles. Um, I've run 50 really? something miles on multiple places, but mine is not. I have never run one way over 60 miles that I know of. Um, I've run around 50 miles several places, yeah. but I have never run over 60 miles. And I, I, I made a. Uh, I promised myself I would never run to Ticonderoga when we go to Champlain, and that's for multiple reasons. But I've um, never made that run either. Yeah, I just I just don't see what the big high. I mean, I know tournaments are one down yeah. there, but man, you're passing too like, much good water. The only way I would too many do good it, fish. The only way I could ever see myself making that run at Champlain is well, the number one reason I haven't is because it's always near the last tournament of the year, and you really can't afford a slip up. Yeah, take out an uncontrollable variable. Yeah, you take out an uncontrollable variable by not running down there. I mean, there's not saying something's going to happen if you go down there, but you increase your likelihood of not making it back to weigh in if, you know, a storm comes up or if the weather's bad or something like that. Like, it's not worth the risk to go down there and have a, a potential, you know, year-ending tournament by not making it back to weigh in. You know, if I was way down in the points or if I was up high enough in the points that it wasn't going to affect me if I had a bad event, yeah, it might be worth the gamble to run down there. But I've never made that run. A um, couple questions here. Let's hit them up real quick. Uh, Jeff will be back in a minute. Um, or he said two <laughs> seconds. Uh, was there a topwater bite at Chick, Brian, that you, that you found? I, I did see. I caught uh, one on top. I saw some frogfish caught yep. from one of the top ten anglers during the final round, but yeah, um, there was a couple guys catching them on a frog. Um, I don't think it there was a real strong topwater bite, which was kind of odd because there was a tremendous mayfly hatch going on. Yeah, and I know uh, Miles he capitalized on that. In That's the what top I saw. 10. He was fishing some yeah. bluffs over some overhang yeah. on some bluff walls. But uh, the topwater bite, all in all, wasn't as strong as I would have thought it would have been. So it 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 wasn't a real big player um brad hildebrandt want to know what my predictions are to win the northern derbies well cayuga is going to take over 20 a day st lawrence is going to take over 20 a day champlain it may not take over 20 a day but it won't be far off of it so they're going to all be slugfest they all are full of fish they all have chock full of three to five pounders too so um cayuga i could see having the largest winning weight just because the largemouth there are so um they're so big and i mean they're just they're some of the most beautiful largemouth i've ever seen i've uh, never been there it's I'd a like to go. It and it's fun. got giant smallmouth in it so oh, there really? was a there was a tournament there two weeks ago if i'm not mistaken don't quote me on that <laughs> that took five smallmouth close right at 29 pounds to win Whew, that is now now i had mouth. heard through the grapevine that they were spawning but still um like last year on 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 uh cayuga i caught only a handful of smallmouth in practice, but they were all giants. Like, you know, five pounder, four pounder, five pounder, three pounder. You know, like no no little ones. Um but they're really hard. That that is a that, that lake gets They're like probably a, very nomadic on it. Extremely. After yeah. they spawn it's almost like a southern smallmouth because that lake is uh it's like four hundred feet deep at its deepest point. It's pretty and deep. When you get below that, that northern you have to end let a lot of line out get a crack. <laughs> yeah. <that one. laughs> Got enough string on my reel <laughs> to fish that deep. Um but they are. They're very unpredictable. Some of the guys that, that capitalized on some of them last year, I had one the first day. I had a place that had them pretty good, and I caught a four-pounder off of it the first day. It's the only one I caught there. And uh, it's um, if you can stay up with them, I, I think you could win on smallmouth there. But the problem is, after they're done spawning, can you stay up with them? Um, they're, they're here one day and gone the next. And when I say gone the next, like literally in the abyss – like, like out there, over, they slide like out there in twenty five foot feet. deep over three hundred foot of water. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's uh that's going to be, but it's going to be every tournament up there is going to be a slugfest, and uh, it will be uh, um, it will be a, a fun tournaments to watch. Uh, Daniel, what's up, Daniel? Daniel's watching. He said, uh, "What frog was I throwing at you, Fala?" Um, I threw two different frogs uh, when there was a little bit of ripple on the water, which was a lot. <laughs> um, I did throw a popping frog and a green pumpkin color 
And then I threw the, the Lunker Hunt Compact Frog, which is just a regular skirted frog in super slick conditions. When I got in the back of a pocket and it was real calm and, and quiet, I would throw that, that, that frog in the color Dusk, which is also similar to kind of a brownish-green pumpkin color. Um, both frogs I was throwing were both brown and green pumpkin. Um, Josh Ingram said it looked, the legs looked the same length to him. Uh, well, he so. didn't look close enough because they were definitely not the same <laughs> length. One was a touch longer than the other. It was like a quarter inch longer. Um, and it allowed me to walk that frog a little bit more and, 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 and get a few extra bites each day. Oh, so, you kidding me. <laughs> uh, I mean, anybody was watching yeah, ESPN2 the last day, they saw me catch a 6'2 <laughs> on a frog. No, that, excuse me, that was on a jig. Put in, and, and it allowed me to get a few more bites. It allowed me to get a few more bites. I mean, you That's know. That's definitely what it was. Uh, <laughs> extra, oh, of course. Uh, an extra bite. I'm not going to argue. Of course you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anybody that missed the episode where we actually threw up the, the Kevin Van Dam video of him agreeing with me yeah. on the frog leg <laughs> stuff was pretty epic. But I've um, never seen Kevin catch one on a frog. I don't even know if he's ever thrown a frog. I don't even know See, how many frogs Kevin exactly. owns. Uh, it's like a jerk bait <laughs> or a square bill or a deep, or a deep dive on crankbait. Not much yes. in between. <laughs> Let's see. Justin Brown wants to know when all the local tackle stores will be restocked. That's interesting because... Uh, That's a great question. I mean, that is a good question. I have no idea. We're all wondering the same thing. <laughs> um, it, sure, I mean, the demand's up and the supply's down, and that has a lot to do with a lot of these uh, manufacturers, warehouses, <laughs> distributors running skeleton crews and uh, things like that because of the COVID deal. So I can't answer that question, Justin. I wish I could tell you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock all of them will have a full inventory. but I can um, tell you guaranteed without a doubt they will not have a full inventory <laughs> at eight o'clock tomorrow morning for a little while this for is, a little while this is going to be going on for months before yeah. they catch it's already out. been going on for months it'll it'll continue <laughs> um, for a little while. thanks for the well wishes daniel so are we ready for question time question time what time is it 802 that makes 802. it question time we're dead on it um, all right, the question tonight, the trivia question, the prize, the giveaway uh, from Angler's Choice, our friends at Angler's Choice, is a hat and a shirt of your, I don't know about of your choice, but you'll send us a message with your sizes and we'll get them sent out to you. But they, they got a lot of sweet apparel now, and uh, I've actually got one there. Am I wearing, what am I wearing tonight? Uh, English Choice. It now. looks like a hat. Are you lying to me? Wait a minute. Uh, that's a Toyota <laughs> hat. I had an Angler's <laughs> Choice hat on earlier today, so you just... I mean, you take every every opportunity you get to make me look stupid. You jump all over it, don't you? Yeah. You did it. <laughs> I did do it. You didn't have to go with it, though. You could have said it's a Toyota hat. I'm always going to go yeah. with it. All right. I think so. Well, there ain't but two hats you that I wear. always got to go with it. It's usually either Toyota or English Choice. Those are the two hats that I wear all the time. So, <laughs> um, Let's see. I see a couple comments about stuff we discussed earlier in the show, about Jacob's Rat Boat, about uh, how I like the, the new Merc. Um, guys, you can... Uh, you can watch the show back as soon as we're done here, and you'll see you'll see uh, detailed conversations answering those questions. Um, all all right. right, question time. Question time. Brian's got to go. I feel like Brian's got to go. He's <laughs> pushing me here. Uh, here we go. Trivia question time. It's for the English Choice hat and shirt. Uh, in the past three weeks in a row, there have been three national level it's tournaments. Terrible. It's terrible. Do we need to tell them which tournaments they were? No. All right, three national level tournaments. And in all three tournaments, there was an angler that took a two-pound penalty because of six fish in the live well. I need to know the names of all three of those anglers, first and last names of all three of those anglers. First and last? First and last. First and last first. name, right. yeah. I mean, they, you could guess a first name, but you yeah. can't guess a first and a last name. Okay. Taking the guessing out of it, okay? All right, well, write the third one down. <laughs> oh, you don't know them. Oh, know. You, you know two of them. Yeah, I'm... I'm Okay, let me, uh, <laughs> they don't have to spell them right, because I don't even know if I spell yeah, them right. Yeah, there you go. Um, but we need to know, already got right. a winner. Already got a winner. Already got a winner. Already got a winner. Who's yours? David Wilder. David Wilder. David, David Wilder's Wilder? the same He's one the I winner. got. Um, we said we needed first and last names. David Wilder's the first one to submit. All first three and names, last name. First and last name. So the answer was... That was a tough one. Y'all said... <laughs> that one. that um, has to be a record. And then Brian Clare I think comes so. in Hank I think that is a, a record. <clears throat> that probably is a record. Well, I mean, I came well, up with... You didn't even get through writing the answer down for me. I really didn't. No. <laughs> so the answer the answer was... <laughs> some homeless guy just walked up. Some homeless guy just walked up to our, our window over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's actually been a guest on the show. Yeah, he's that actually been. Funny. That uh, was funny. So yeah, we got we got we got to tell what the answer is. Walt is here. Um, the answer was Shane LeHue did it in the Elite Series, and we'll just tell a backstory because it actually cost him a two pound penalty. Gross in the top ten. It cost Shane the two pound penalty, which moved Shane out of the top ten. Buddy Gross into the top ten, and Buddy Gross ended up winning the tournament. Um, poor John Garrett, and I felt so bad for John. I sent him a message on Instagram telling him to keep his head up. Um, I watched that tournament, watched how it went down, watched how he handled the situation. I thought it was awesome. A lot of respect goes out to John, but John unfortunately did that in the Bass Open at the Arkansas River, and it cost him the win. Yes. Um, and then there was Wheeler, who took the penalty and still, still won by 14, by like 14 pounds. pounds. <laughs> so those are the three answers. I think he did it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Think he like he could have purpose. put 12 fish in the live well and still won. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe five, I don't two, know. I'm just guessing. One. How many penalties is that? I don't know. I'm so just, wait a minute. Let me just. He probably could have won. Let, let me just ask a question. All right. Let's see if you can answer this. <laughs> if if I got five fish in a live well and I catch a ten pounder, six pounder, seven pounder, five pounder, four pounder, three pounder, whatever, catch seven or eight biggins, and I just throw them all in the live well, I ain't. You ain't cold to one. I you ain't just, cold to one. Next thing you know, you got twelve in the live. Next well. thing I know, I got twelve in the live well. Am I penalized two pounds or is it per fish? Or is it I'm, every time I'm thinking you it's, make a cast? I'm thinking it's two there. pounds for every additional I cast. I saw Mark McGuire on here earlier. Maybe Mark can answer that yeah, question for us. He's the tournament director. I don't, I don't know. I can't answer that. <laughs> but I would think it would have to be compounded. I wouldn't think one piddle. At the rate that. we're going, somebody's going to do that in the next month <laughs> <Yes>. or so. <laughs> um, but anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. We had... I don't know. We had a lot of, a lot of good show. Tonight. We had a good show. It was a good show. It was a good <laughs> show. And... Um, so I'll, I'll post on my social media about the New York swing. We should know something this week, hopefully, because we, we're supposed to leave next Thursday. Um, yeah, that's quick. And then you're leaving next week. I'm leaving next week to go to Sturgeon Bay. And uh, so we'll probably – we'll try to have a show when I get back from that because you'll be gone. If y'all go I'll to be New gone. York, Matt's going to be gone for a while. If, so, you need help, if you need help, just reach out yeah, to Walt. We'll, we'll get Walt in here. We'll, we'll have a show of some sort. All right, you heard that. Y'all heard that. Brian's going to have a show I mean, while maybe I'm away. not every week, but <laughs> occasionally. We'll At least on once in. while I'm we'll gone. We'll work on it. I'll be back like August 1st or 2nd. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to get up with Matt. He'll be practicing. So we, yes. we can call him up and make sure he's not mad like I was at Chick. But, buzz, <laughs> buzz me in. Uh, buzz me in, and we'll, uh, we'll give an update on what's going down in New York. So hopefully we're there. Knock on wood. But um, all right. Everybody, Brian, you want to sign us on? Sign us off. Yeah, sign us on. So, mm-hmm. Y'all want to start over again? Chicken things. Chicken things. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and sign us off. Thank you guys for watching, as always. Um, follow along as we travel around the next couple weeks fishing, and we'll be back as soon as we can. But until then, remember, if we can't go fishing, what are we going to do, Matt? We're going to sit right here and talk fish. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk Fish. Visit our private Facebook group to continue the conversation, post your questions, and talk with other fellow anglers at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Let's Talk Fish. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Fish Official and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. Join us again next episode for more actionable tips, tactics, and techniques directly from the pros. And remember, when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and talk fish.